Dev Environment, Part 5 or Step 5. I'm your host, and you know my name already if you watch the other four parts, so no need to do that again. These are the books. Uh, basically, most of what we've done so far came out of building the SharePoint 2016 home lab, although troubleshooting SharePoint definitely goes through in a lot more detail uh, at a much deeper level on how to troubleshoot issues you might come across when you're working with SharePoint. So uh, without further ado, I'm really going to start get going to, to step five. Really, there's, there isn't really much uh, prerequisite knowledge if you followed all four of these, uh, these videos so far. So really, uh, there is a lot, lot of information about SharePoint. It's a very deep, deep, deep platform, but uh, as far as just getting the base build set up, anybody can do it if you just have the right guy. It's kind of like baking a cake. If you, I, I mean, I, I can barely bake a cake, but there's recipes out there. So, anyhow, uh, let's get going and start on step five. So in this step, what we're going to do is continue to build. We're going to jump onto the WFE, uh, which is also the distributed cache server, and we're going to go ahead and run the auto SP installer. All right. Uh, with, uh, I guess uh, I say without further ado quite a bit. So without further ado, uh, it's demo time. Woohoo! Yay! You've pretty much seen everything we're about to do already if you've watched step four. So I'm basically just going to check to see, make sure I'm on the WFE. And you can see up here that I am, but you can't always trust that guy. This guy you can trust though, right here. So the old host name command. There you go. We're on the WFE. Cool. So let's go ahead and get in there. We've already got everything staged, ready to go. It's just a matter of time now that the window will open because these are lab computers. They're uh, very low resource. Definitely would not be something you would run in a production environment, but whatever. So we've got in here, we've got the SharePoint binaries. They're all sitting there. And I'm more so just doing this check myself to make sure I didn't uh, put things in the wrong place. I'm not doing any language packs. If I was, though, you saw the folder where they could go here. But I'm not doing it. I'm just doing the base SharePoint out of the box. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the demo, and I'm going to drop it onto the batch file. Um, you know, I showed before we like to turn on the file name extensions. So I'm just going to turn that on. And then we're going to drop this batch file, right, or I'm sorry, XML file right on top of the bat file, and it's going to run. It's going to run the uh, installer, auto SP installer. It's going to happen a lot quicker than the app server because it doesn't have to create any of the databases. It's just going to go ahead and check and see if the prereqs are installed. And hopefully it won't need any kind of a restart. If it does, though, we'll just restart it. But after it's done checking that, it'll go ahead and start running the setup. We'll let it run. I'll probably pause the video during that part just to save disk space and time. And then once the setup completes and the updates complete, we'll go ahead and get things back on the video stream. So... I'm going to pause the video now.
you can see right here, I don't know if we noticed that before on the first server, but it would have said uh, application with search probably, or maybe application with search, I don't know. But this one is definitely a web front end with distributed cache, so, you know, kind of cool. So right now what it's doing is it's uh, actually least privileging distributed cache, which is actually pretty cool because doing it with PowerShell is, you know, a little bit of a challenge. So this is nice. It's doing it with PowerShell for us. Okay, so at this point, the auto SP installer is almost done with adding the WFE to the farm. It's about to launch the portal.wingtip.com and the my site to launch that as well. So we're almost done. Woohoo!
And if we open up IIS, we can probably see that uh, the bindings are set as well. So let's just get the IIS open. While wow, those sites try to load. Let's see. Script says it's all done, and so we can press any key to exit. It took a lot less time than yesterday. So if we look in here, we can see that there is a binding, hopefully, for these two sites. We will see in just a moment, once it stops not responding. Tell this, uh, don't show this, no. Come in here, and even here. Looks like we got a binding, and here. Looks like we don't have a binding there, so let's see what happens with that guy. predict we're probably going to see the my site and this site's going to have a really cool blue IS uh, logo on it. Maybe it did set the binding. Maybe I just looked at it too soon. Let's see. Nope. Yep. Well, this needs a binding right here. That needs to have portal.wingtip.com. Otherwise, the site's going to stop. So we need to do a binding. that and that's basically setting up the WFE all right and that's all there is to step five so pretty simple basically just make sure all the files are staged just like you did on step four you know the updates all uh, the SharePoint stuff yeah obviously the server needs to be a member of the domain and the uh, first farm needs to be built because the IOSP installer expects the other server to be there. So we're not doing the remote install. If we were, it would have just IOSP installer would have actually just done everything. And we would the thing we would have had to do is make sure that the files were on all the servers, basically. Would be all we would have had to do would be just to stage the files. If we had checked remote install when we originally created the IOSP installer, then the first time we ran it, it would have then ran it and ran through the entire farm until the farm was completely done. So anyway, something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, keep that in your mind, all right? And uh, I'll see you on step six, okay? Thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.